Hey, sports fans, Larry Eater, uh, Run Blog Run. This is our program, Socialing the Distance. Tonight, we're featuring one of the guys we dearly love, Tom Walsh. He is the bronze medalist from 2016, Rio de Janeiro. He is the gold medalist from 17 in London, bronze 219 in Doha, one that blew my mind. I loved uh, his golds in 16 and 18 in Birmingham and Portland in the World Indoors. And then I got to see him in 14 at the Commonwealth Games. I wanted to go in 18, but I just had heart surgery, buddy, or I got to see you in your goal. Good to see you. <laughs> you too. Well, look, you asked me how you wanted to introduce me. and uh, Yeah, so I just had to throw it all out there, man. You know, I think you nailed it. I think you nailed it. Um, so how are you doing? Look, I'm, uh, I'm okay. I'm okay. We're... We're pretty lucky in New Zealand. Yeah, um, we can. We've got no COVID. Actually, we we've got two two cases at the moment. I think. Yeah. Um. So pretty much no COVID. Um. Mm-hmm. So we can move around and and go to sports. Uh. You know, games. Like we went to a cricket game, uh, the other Ooh. night with ten thousand people there. Um. You know, bits and pieces like that. So it's almost normal life, uh. But it's also frustrating because. It's not like that overseas, and there's no guarantee sure. that something is definitely going to happen. Um, so, and see, so we can't really plan long term, um, and we've got to be pretty fluid with with uh, things like that when we do plan, and and um, you know what we can go to and what we can't. So it is. It's look. I'm happy that I'm in New Zealand. It's a great place, but also I do the sport to you know to compete against the best guys in the world, um, and you know that's one thing that's that, sucks you know um, sure. that, uh, that that we that it's not easily um easily accessible to do that uh anymore when did you know the pandemic was for real when did you go oh <laughs> damn yeah we're we've got some shit coming up well, i think um probably when we came out of our first lockdown um and our only lockdown mm-hmm. which was probably in uh june um okay. we came okay. out of it yeah. And uh, and we came out and we had no cases and, and, and it's been great. And and so we were able to go back to normal life um, like we've been very lucky for the last nine months to be able to do. Uh, but then, you know, talking to some of my mates in America, you know, Ryan Whiting, Doral, Joe, sure. um, all those guys, and then going, you know, it's stuffed over here, training's hard and all this. I think I realised then that the likelihood of me going to Europe that year um, and having meaningful competition was probably not going to happen. Uh, and I went through some pretty tough times motivational-wise, mm-hmm. um, you know, because that's why, I did it. as I said yeah, before, I'm sure. throwing against the best guys. And, and not to have that and not to have that to work towards to was, was shit. <laughs> what, um, how are you feeling now? Do you think that Tokyo is going to happen or are you giving it 50-50? Are, are, are what's motivating you right now? Definitely Tokyo, for sure. Um, I think, you know, there's too much money uh, wrapped up in Tokyo for it not to happen. Um, and the Japanese are very well, very good at organising things. Yeah, so yeah. Um, so I think, and I'm, I've got to be positive about this, I, I believe sure. that it is going to go ahead. Um, and I think it needs to for people to train towards and to, to have something to work towards um, because another year without any major things around is, is going to be tough for people, for sure. In 2022, you're going to have the Commonwealth Games, which you defend. You're going to have a World Championships in Eugene. Are you looking forward to 2022? Oh, for sure. I think um, the virus will be still around and it will still mean that we have to, uh, you know, be pretty pliable with our movements and and, and it won't be normal travel still. Um, but, you know, this year I've made a decision that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go overseas um, and I just have to deal with, the, you know, two-week quarantine in a hotel when I come back to New Zealand uh, as part of that. So, yeah. Um, it's, it's definitely more doable now. People are, you know, uh, making it workable um, in terms of getting competitions going, getting travel stuff. People understand the travel stuff a little bit more, getting into certain countries. Um, it's just, it's, it's becoming not, un, not, not normal, but it's becoming, I guess, a little bit more normal. 
You have a manager that is uh, rather eccentric, Andy Stubbs. We love him. <laughs> and he makes me laugh and he challenges me. How has he challenged you and talked to you through this pandemic? Well, I guess it's been it's been really hard for not only us, but the managers, right? Because that's yeah. uh, how they make their living um, with with us going overseas and organising competitions and, and and that kind of stuff. So it's been pretty tough for him, I think. And he's a he's a pretty social character as well. So yeah, he's, yeah. He's missed the uh, you know the, the coffees or the beers or whatever it is <laughs> going to the bar and and things. So we've had a few phone calls and and stuff, but you know he just. Um, you know, he just wants to, um, for his his point of view, he wants competitions to start going ahead so the athletes can get ready um, again for, you know, Lo- uh, sorry, not London, Tokyo, of course, and, uh, you know, just and, and get in the right shape and, and also, I guess, for him to travel again because I just, he doesn't have a physical address, I'm pretty sure. He's, I he's don't a, think he does because I thought San Francisco and then I don't know where he's at right now, you know, and uh, – yeah. Um, how has your training been affected by the pandemic? Um, so, you know, as I talked about just before, I've been pretty lucky, really. Um, there was a six-week period where uh, the whole of New Zealand was in a lockdown, so you weren't allowed to, to leave home, um, pretty much. Um, so I moved some weights into the garage at home, uh, and, I, and I biked to a circle that was about 10 minutes away from my house. Um, so I was allowed to do those things. Uh, so that was about a six-week period where things were reasonably reasonably tough and not easily accessible. Uh, but I know, of course, you know, it's still like that for many countries around the world. So I'm very lucky. But uh, training-wise, yeah, not a lot. But competition-wise, hugely affected, obviously. Um, how old were you when you first did the shot put? How old was I? I think I probably started at, I'd say, eight or nine. Um, and then I kind of did it at school sports days um, mm-hmm. and things like that to just <laughs> to have the day off school, to be completely honest. Sure, um, sure. And uh, and I probably did that, like, not that seriously all the way up until probably, I'd say, 18. Okay. Um, and and because, uh, you know, I've got dyslexia, so school wasn't my favourite place. Mm-hmm. Um and so I kind of, and I was good at it. Like I was, pretty, I was reasonably good at a school level. Uh, and then, you know, I kind of started taking it seriously, you know, 19, 20, 21. Um, and, and a major part of that was was Jack O'Gill, obviously, here yeah. in New Zealand and, yeah. and setting world youth and world junior records in the shop. But that was a, you know, major driving force for me. Um, and also people telling me, you know, no, nah, you're not the guy. Jack is the guy. You're not going to throw far. <laughs> And I was like, stuff this. I'm not going to let this young guy from Auckland, which is where he lives, um, have an easy ride at it. Uh, and, of course, you know, here we are now. And, and, and Jacko is, is, is thrown really well uh, still and, and yeah. is improving, which is great. But uh, I, I, I think I'm on the right side of that ledger at the moment. When you took the bronze medal in uh, Rio in 16. Were you surprised by that or were you happy you knew that you were there? No, I, I was, I think two years earlier than that, I, I got the bronze medal at World Indoors. Yeah. Um, so that was that was kind of my first taste of international competition and I kind of faked my way into um, winning that medal. Um, and actually it was in Poland and I took, oh. off, Thomas, I took it off Thomas Majewski. Oh, um, man. Oh, oh, God. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, which is not the wisest thing to do in Poland, of course. No. And, and things like that. So, wow. Um, yeah, so going forward another two years, I, I had two more years of international competition. I was feeling much more comfortable. Um, I had a lot of self-confidence in myself and my own ability to throw really far. Um, and I was, I was still very young at that stage. I think I was 24 maybe. Mm. Um, yeah, 24 I would have been. Or 23, maybe. So, um, you know, I was, I was up and coming, um, and I, I, I thought I was the next guy on the block in terms of, you know, one of the next next big guys. You know, you, you talk about Reese Hoffer, Christian Campbell, Adam Nelson. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I, I thought maybe I was almost getting to, to, 
to be the next group of those guys. Um, sure, sure. And uh, and so I, I thought I, I expected to go there and throw well and and to to have a chance of not maybe not winning but getting definitely second or third. Um, so it was it was it was good for me uh, and. Uh, I probably underperformed, to be completely honest. I thought I probably could have thrown a little bit further. Um, but, you know, it was my first Olympics and and you yeah, definitely learn a lot of things between now and then, for sure. In 16, you also won the World Indoor in Portland. Uh, mm-hmm. Talk to us about that. Well, you know, it was amazing. Portland's a great great town, a great city, uh, obviously the home of Nike um, and, and things like that. And it was it was really well put on. It was an awesome kind of event to go to. And and uh, it was, to be completely honest with you, it was a, it was a reasonably weak um, shot put competition. Uh, uh-huh. I think Reese, Reese Hoffer chose not to go because he was doing a TED Talk. Um, and and, uh, um, and I think, uh, you know, none of the, the big names, you know, Thomas didn't go, David Stahl didn't go, obviously Reese didn't go. Um, Joe didn't go for some reason, um, and just little things like that. So I, I got a little bit lucky. Um, I still threw really well. I threw twenty-one seventy something, maybe eighty something, mm-hmm. um, and I guess that was another builder to my confidence to kind of go. Actually, you know what? Even though those guys aren't there, you still had to do it and do it on the day. And I think at that point in time, that was a PB. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was, I was really happy with with that competition, and it was. I'll tell you what, it was a great few nights after that. <laughs> and then you won London in 17, which was mm-hmm. one of the most, I think, amazing. I've been to 17 World Championships, and I thought it was it's my favorite. You know, I mean, London's just a blast. 2012 was a kick. 17 was even better. But you had a great season before London. Mm-hmm. I saw you throwing in different places, yeah. and you were you were on, man, and you were really competitive. And I've got an interview with you from right before London, yeah, and I, I should have put some money on you then because <laughs> we were talking and you were just, you were confident and you you weren't, or unapo- the term I'm going to use, you were unapologetic about how competitive you are. I love how competitive you are. Oh, and yeah. and, and it, I think it's one of the things that makes you you, right? But you were just on it, man. And it's just like, I'd love to see that with athletes. And those are the things I'm looking for going to the three or four last events before a world champs. Mm-hmm. Tell us where you were and how that competition went. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I was, I was in some great form, but, but uh, going into that and I was pretty confident, but to be fair, the safe money was on Joe and, and Ryan, you know, those again yeah. from the previous year, this, if, if you were a gambling man, um, you would have probably put some money on those two. Um, yeah. And uh, actually, uh, so two days before the comp, actually, you know, the day before qualifying, um, I'm actually just looking at the photo. I've got a photo just above the computer framed of uh, Joe, myself, and Stipe on the middle stand. So, oh, cool. <laughs> but, um, uh, and so, so one day before the competition, I was in my last training session going through the motions and I pulled my adductor. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I had a I, I had a seven centimetre tear, which is you know a decent amount, two inches um, yeah. tear of my ductor, um, and so I didn't even know if I was going to throw in the qualifying rounds, uh, and I got in there obviously full of drugs on board, painkillers of course, um, and you know the first two warm up throws I was in agony walking out of the circle, um, not sure if I could if I could even throw in the competition. And I thought to myself uh, in the first round of qualifying, I thought, look, if you bloody, if you tear your adductor, um, it's season over, um, but at least you gave it a crack. Uh, and so I gave it a crack, all right, and I, um, sorry, my, 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 my phone's just going off on me. I'll get rid of it. Um, <laughs> and um, I, uh, I gave it a good crack, and I think I threw 22-14, which is the season's best. Uh, in the qualifying round. And, and, of course, there you go from, you know, maybe being a middle hopeful to everyone going, oh, it's yours to lose, Tommy, you know? Yeah, and yeah. no one knew at that point in time that I still had a – I probably had a bigger tear after I threw those throws as well. So wow. 
Um, and then I, then I had much the same mentality going into the final of just, you know, look, you may only get one throw, um, so make it count. And it is amazing what adrenaline does um, for you. You know, uh, I went through the competition pretty much without pain um, and obviously managed to lead from start to finish and, and progressively throw further through the comp, which was fantastic. Um, but then the night, like within probably two hours of me finishing, I was, I pretty much couldn't walk. Um, I was, oh my God. I was, uh, my doctor was that cooked. And, yeah. and so then I had, uh, three weeks off and, and, and started to throw in some other competitions later in the year, but that was a phenomenal moment for me. Um, and you know, I was very lucky. My, um, my girlfriend, um, was there who still is my girlfriend now. She's very, uh, <laughs> she's very patient with me <laughs> um, and my parents were there and my first coach was there. Oh, um, that's cool. So, it was, oh, a, it was a pretty special moment for me and and uh, definitely a moment I'll never forget. And then in 18, you won the, the Commonwealth Games. Um, yeah. And I tried to, you know, I, I went to 2014 Commonwealth. I loved it. And, in fact, I convinced three Scottish newspaper writers that I was there to get the U.S. back in the Commonwealth Games because we had been a colony. And <laughs> I mean, we worked it for a while. You know, I got some beers yeah. off it. Uh, I love the Commonwealth Games. But how would you explain that to an American audience? What's the big thing about the Commonwealth Games? Because people seem to have a great time. Yeah, look, and it is, and it's it's a, a mini, mini Olympic Games is, is pretty much what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, and here in New Zealand, as strange as it sounds, it goes Olympic Games, Commonwealth Games, World Championship. Okay. Um, yeah. Just because the public have more an association with the Commonwealth Games because there's not just track and field going, you know, there's, yeah. there's rowing, there's cycling, there's running, there's all types of things. Um, and so that's why, you know, people in New Zealand hold it in a higher regard than build championships, which, of course, um, in some events it is just as strong, um, but in other events it isn't. isn't. Uh, so, you know, obviously I went into uh, – Commonwealth Games in Brisbane, an 18 hot favourite. Yeah. Uh, and I would have been extremely pissed off <laughs> if I left there with anything but the gold. And mm. uh, I tried my best not to win. Um, that was for sure. I, <laughs> I had a great qualifying throw of 22.45 and I thought, all right, here we go. I'm in the shape. I'm going to – I'm in world record shape, I thought. Um, and I proceeded to listen to that and listen to people tell me, for once, at that point in time, it started changed from Tom. It's not going to be you. To Tom, it's the day of the day. You know, should I put some money on? It? Should I, you know? And I started listening to that uh, yeah. chat from that white noise, that, yeah. that stuff that doesn't really matter. But for some reason, I grabbed it and thought, "Oh yeah, it is today. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go out there. I'm gonna smash it. I'm gonna go and throw the world record." And I went out there and threw 2140 or something like that. Wow. So, wow. Um, uh, was, which, which was not anywhere near what I was with. So, yeah. uh, again, um, really over the moon that I won that, but there was a lot of frustration, um, you know, how I, how I won that, if that makes sense. When um, And I've asked all the shot putters I've interviewed uh, this next question. When do you know you've got a big throw? Um, it's just the confidence for me. Obviously, it's, it's it's a lot of stuff that's going going in training. So I'm a guy that will will train. You know, under heavy loading, I'll be throwing eighteen fifty to nineteen fifty in training because okay. I, I I I just don't. I, I need speed, I need timing, I need rhythm for me to throw well. So there is big changes when I'm in heavy loading to when I'm in when I'm fresh. Uh, and at the moment, I'm I'm almost fresh now. So I've got two more competitions, which you know we like. To, I'd like to I'd like to line one up in the next two because I feel like I'm I'm starting to get that freedom in the circle. Um, I'm not forcing it, and things are starting to just snap into position um, without me thinking about it and. And I've just when when I get a big one, it's just like I've got. I feel like I've got five minutes in the circle. 
you know. Okay. Wow. I know it's over, wow. I know it's over in, a, in a click of the fingers, but yeah. I feel like I'm like, boom, 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 boom. Yep, I got this. Boom, yep, yep, boom. And I kind of, it's just time. I have all this time um, with the shot in the circle, just nailing those positions and, and nailing, you know, that movement through. Um, and then also leading into it, it's just the confidence that comes from the, the training throws um, and how far they're going and, and how easy they are and so forth. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure if it's a simple way of answering. I think I've made it very complicated. But, no, uh, no, I, I get it. All right, yeah. so here's my next question. So um, the American discus thrower, John Powell, was yeah. my throws coach when I coached community college. Yeah. And I remember sitting down with him one night and saying, hey, show me how to watch the shot in the discus. And he looked at me and he said, watch their feet in the ring. Mm-hmm. And I said, what do you mean? He goes, both throws are about speed. Both throws are about controlling speed. Yeah. Both throws are about physics. <laughs> the fastest guy who has the control is the guy who's going to do it. If I was watching your feet in the ring, mm-hmm. would I think you were one of the fast ones? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I am. Um... I am one of the fast ones. <laughs> I like to like yeah. to say that myself. Um, yeah, that's where I throw with you know speed and power. Um, where you know someone like Dalin Romani or or or, um, or Ryan Krauser, because they're bigger guys also, um, yeah. and, and they're stronger guys that they can afford to go a little bit slower, um, to, and, and they still throw fast. So um, yeah, and I'm I'm only six foot. Uh, where Ryan Krauser and Darlin are six five or six six, so um, and and Darlin is you know three hundred and three hundred kg bench press, which is six sixty pounds or something. Oh my like that. gosh! Wow. <laughs> when, when I, I, one more thing about Paul. When Paul threw, he was the smallest guy of the discus boys, and he told me it was all about the technique. Mm-hmm. Is it? Is that? If, if I was going to try to describe you in your throwing style. You're not the biggest guy, like you've said. I think you're competitive with everybody. You compete harder than just about anybody that I've seen. Is it your technique that makes you different? Um, <laughs> it's a very, it's a, it's a good question. It's a very Thank good you. Question. Occasionally um, from middle distance runner, you know, I can <laughs> observe for five years and, and come up yeah, with something, yeah. you know? Um, I think the fact that I live in New Zealand gave me the freedom to find my own way a okay. little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, where you know, America, uh, uh, Germany, Poland, all these countries have a long history of throwers, and so they have got a roadmap to yeah. some degree. And I was pretty much, um, I wasn't coachless, but I was. I pretty much did um, a lot of my own technical stuff mm-hmm. um, with a bit of help here and there from people um, until I was probably 22, 21, 22. Um, so I kind of just figured out what felt right to me. Okay. Uh, and so therefore, and what felt right to me was, you know, that freedom, that flow, that effortless speed um, through the circle and and yes, I looked at videos and I watched videos of other throwers, but I didn't really have the context around why they were doing stuff. So I kind of just had to figure it out a bit for myself. And I kind of tried a lot of stuff and I go, well, that doesn't work. I'm throwing this, throwing that. We'll try this now, you know. And, and I just tried a lot of things. And um, I think someone explained my technique as um, rec- recklessly fast. I yeah. like that. Oh, good. I'll have to <laughs> quote that one. Um, and and I, I thought that was fantastic. I thought, yeah, yeah I think that's awesome. It's be, yeah. Uh, Doha men's shot put hmm. was probably one of the three best competitions in the entire world championships. What What are the oh, the entire world championships? Okay. Okay. Yep. And um, I think three? my two uh, – it's easy to say the hundred men's was good. Um, I got to tell you, the men's ten thousand was mm-hmm. like an amazing chess game. The pole vault men and women, men and women, they're at a level right now where the technique is all good. They encourage mm-hmm. each other, but I also see the men's shot putters encouraging each other. 
But that was the in some certain points. Some of us. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. The um, I want to take you back to that because I, I I have four questions to ask you about it. That I've been dying to ask you. Yeah. One um, is by the, way, by the way, I've just been able to sleep well at night. Okay. All right. Yeah. I'll so try to be it. nice. I'll try to be nice. <laughs> um, you had an amazing competition. Yeah. Were you were you angry or were you happy afterwards or were you in between? I didn't know what to think. Okay. Um, I was happy because I threw I, – again, I didn't probably throw what I was quite worth, um, mm -hmm. but I was very happy that I managed to still throw very well um, in the competition. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I was bamboozled because I never saw – I knew that the guys were capable of doing it. Yeah. There was no doubt that there was – that I didn't think they were capable of throwing that far. But two other guys? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Throwing, no, no, no. Th throwing the same distance. Or, well, Joe, for example, one centimetre further than me. Ryan won the same distance as me in the same competition, a throw that no one had thrown in 30 years Yeah. Uh, as far as that. I didn't see. So I was between absolutely confused uh, and kind of happy with managing to, to do the performance. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In a competition like that, as close as that was, mm -hmm. do you encourage, do you pat a guy on the back when he's thrown well or do you let them the hell alone during the competition? Because I'm, I'm seeing things from I, I'm watching it. I'm at the top row, man. Okay, in the stadium all the time. That's where I'm at. I've got my the the computer screen there, and then I've got my binoculars, and I'm watching you guys, right? And I'm watching what you're trying to do in between stuff, and I'm taking notes. Um, you sometimes seem to you smile, mm -hmm. yeah. But you are kind of in your own place. Is that a way to describe how yeah, you are so during a competition? I and and the guys know this. Um, and I, when I'm chatty, yeah, in between throws, I'm on. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I shouldn't be giving away all my secrets, should I? Um, generally, generally, when I'm chatty between throws, I know that I'm on for something. Okay, okay, cool. All right. Whether that's on for enough to win or whatever, but I'm on yeah. to throw pretty well for where I'm at. Um, so what the guys try and do. Is not talk to me. <laughs> wow! Wow! Okay. Um, and of course, when Ryan Whiting was throwing, who's, who's my best mate, um, uh, we were fine because he he liked liked to chat too. So we always yeah. just chat to each other. And now Conrad, I chat to Conrad Bukovsky, um through round. But but um, definitely, you know, me and Krauser, we don't talk really. Uh, Joe, me and Joe talk a little bit sometimes depending on what frame of mind he's in. Uh, Darrell, depending also what frame yeah, of mind he's in. Yeah. Darlin could kill a man, so you try and stay away from him. <laughs> yeah, he uh, just looks, he scares the hell out of me. And he yeah. must be the nicest guy, but again, yeah. he just, yeah. it's that size, you know? Oh, yeah. Um, and so I just think you've got to figure out what, what works for you and, and what you're like when you feel it's thrown well. And, and if that is, you know, put the blinkers on uh, the whole time, and that's what you've got to do. But I'm more of a guy who, you know, turns off, you know, looks at the crowd, see if I know anyone, see if there's any good-looking girls watching, you know, um, or talk a little bit to the guys. Uh, and then, boom, I'm back into to my routine, you know, three throws beforehand um, in terms of what I'm trying to achieve. And, and that's what works best for me. Um, and, you know, for someone like, Joe, um, Joe is generally quite zoned in the whole time. Um, and look, that works for him. So you just got to find your kind of wee niche. When you're in the ring, mm -hmm. do you hear any sounds around you? Oh, I just hear it's background noise. I probably okay. hear. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, that's about it, really. Um, okay. one, thing, one thing that is very interesting, though, is that I don't see anything. So after the really? fact, after I start turning off the back, um, I don't see anything visually until the shot put lands. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a so, blackout. 
The question, other question I wanted to ask is I watch you guys when you're spinning and there's so much speed. Mm -hmm. There's so much need for control. Yeah. To finish a throw legally, is that the hardest thing to do, to keep control and stay in the ring? Because it looks to me sometimes, I've when I've only watched Ryan when he's pissed and he's not throwing well, right? <laughs> and he walks, and, and, you know, as a farmer coach, and I did the shot, I, you know, I had kids who were, you know, throwing 50 feet U.S., and I did not like throwers following on purpose. It just annoyed, it was like having a distance runner drop out of a race. I... I can talk to somebody for about five minutes because I would just, I just thought it was a bad <laughs> habit to get into. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I watch, um, I've watched various throwers and I know they're not happy with the foul or this or that, and they just foul it on purpose. It is. So what I'm wondering is, does it take more control to keep yourself in the ring when you're having a big throw? Mm-hmm. Um, or do you get into this habit? I'm going to finish the throw. Yeah, I think, uh, well, two things. I think, one, the reason why some people fail, and, and I'll be guilty of this sometimes, is just touching the top of the stop board, is because it's an ego thing, right? So I know that it's gone, let's just say 2050, and I've yeah. thrown 2150. So yeah. I know that it doesn't really matter. <laughs> the one one day that might come back and bite me in the ass because yes. of the can. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, but generally, I would back myself to throw further again. But anyway, so I think I think we're all guilty of that. All shot putters, all probably just any any thrower uh, in any event is guilty of doing that. Um, and when when you're on, it's generally very easy to save a throw. I don't struggle with generally saving throws. Say, however, saying that um, in Doha, I did. Okay. Um, because I had uh, all of my throws, I think I had two fair throws in that competition. Uh, the other four throws were all in excess of 22, 30. Um, and uh, I couldn't stay in the circle. And whether that was the fact that I knew that I had the big one already out there, yeah. um, maybe in the back of my mind, but also I couldn't. I didn't stay in the circle like I usually do stay in the circle, which is generally very easily. Who has the bigger ego, sprinters or throwers? <laughs> I think you see it more from the sprinters than the throwers, but I think we have different egos too. So it's okay. You know, some of it is is um, uh, you know when we go into a diamond league competition, it, yeah. it, it really is a uh, fend for yourself kind of thing. You know, the sure. tough will, it's tough will survive, and uh, you know you get that you get the shot put. And you you get in, get in that circle. If no one's in that circle, then you know um, you go in there. And it doesn't matter if someone's fluffing around who's meant to be in next. Not nah, stuff them you're in. So it's more. It's just it's a it's quite ferocious in warm ups and and so forth like that. But uh, I think um, we generally get on a lot better than the sprinters. Yeah. I would say. Um, yeah. yeah. I always I always say that um, you can sort a lot of stuff out between throwers over good, good food and a good beer. Um, and, and generally, you know, and you quite often see us, you know, socializing, um, after the competition with each other. Well, I always house throwers with distance runners because they like to check out girls. They like food, they like beer and they, they have a good laugh. And so never had a problem doing that. All right. So five athletes, you got three to five words. Okay. Uh, first one, Thomas Majewski. Bald. Um, <laughs> uh, um, uh, 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 champion and um, good man. Yeah, cool. yeah, he's one of my faves. Um, David Storl. <laughs> I um, never got him to talk. I've never been able to. I mean, I've had a couple interviews with the group, but I've never been able to get him to kind of like talk he, about he his has, stuff. He's changed, changed dramatically since when I first came onto the scene. Okay. Um, what would I say, uh, David? Um, he is uh, very German. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, Smooth, 
and um, confident. Okay. Um, Ryan Krauser. Tall. <laughs> Very tall. Um, <laughs> That's better than the bald one. That is better than the bald one. Okay, good. All right. Um, uh, what was he? Uh, um, oh, he probably won't like me saying this. I think he's an underperformer. Okay. And athletic freak. I know there's more than three words there, but yeah. I just used the term freak in a big interview in a men's magazine about him. Okay. And I, 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 um, took I, I put Bubka in there, I put a couple others, but I also said freak can be used for genius. And mm-hmm. and there are special people in different events. Um Ryan Whiting. <laughs> um uh, what is he? Um he is uh, <laughs> funny. Um uh, what, uh, what is Ryan? Um, twitchy, very incredibly twitchy athlete. Um, and, and boy, he loves a drink. Okay. <laughs> a drinker. Right. drinker. Talk to, uh, I'm going to throw one more out there because yeah. I, I had thought about it. Uh, Joe Kovacs. Joe Kovacs. Um, <sighs> <laughs> he, uh, he big boy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, again, freakishly strong. Mm-hmm. Strong. He could be a world's strongest man. Okay. Um, and suave. Okay. Wow. He was, I, he's always got his oh hand yeah. on Oh, yeah. Yep, yep. To, you know, it's a point. All right. Final question, and you've done 38 minutes in – Tom, thank you so much. I've been wanting to interview you for a while, and I'm glad Stubbsy was able to get a hold of you, and and uh, we follow your stuff. In the next two years, will we see a 23-5-0 throw? Yep. Okay. Will we why see not? two? Why not? That's what, you know, I mean, I, I'm, I'm looking and seeing where, like, I watched what Krauser did indoors, but I watched his falls, too. And when I interviewed him afterwards, he told me that the big throw he wasn't impressed with, it was 2109. And I said, why? And I went back and looked at it. It looked technically better. And yeah. when you guys, I think it's in putting you guys together, giving you six or eight competitions to compete, I think we could see some big stuff. Do you tend to agree? Mm-hmm. I, I think so too. I think that's an interesting point Ryan um, uh, brought up there. With he was more happy with the the twenty one oh nine throw. Um, I think for me, in this yeah. sense, of course, that um, to throw far, I don't ne- necessarily have to do it technically well. Um, wow. Okay. Yeah. I think, and this is for me. And, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Sure, sure, sure. The way I think about it, I, I know I've had some big throws and. They haven't always been technically spot on. You know, I've had my left foot in the bucket around the corner. I've, you know, cut the back. I've done all these kind of things, all those things you shouldn't do. And you look at the world record throw by Randy Barnes. His foot is so far left of the stop board, it's crazy, right? Yeah. And people say, you never throw far like that. So for me, when I throw far, as we talked about earlier, is it's when it's, you know, free, it's it's flowing, I'm not trying to do things. And so for me, I more judge a good throw on if it is that rather yeah. than if I'm hitting this position. But this, this is also the different way we think, well, I think about it compared to Ryan. Ryan is much more of a, uh, a positions kind of guy than, than, than I am. I'm more of a, a movement feel guy than what Ryan has been. And, and again, that shows you how, um, how there is so many different ways to skin a cat. Yeah. Um, and there is no right way. Um, so for me, it's, it's just about having that freedom. And if I can get that and start getting more and more throws at that, that's when I start getting the big throws jumping and so on forth. 
Thomas Walsh, thank you so much. We are with uh, Thomas Walsh, 2017 world champion, 2018 Commonwealth gold medalist and bronze medalist in one of the finest shot put competitions mm -hmm. I've ever seen in 2019. Thank you for your time. Mm -hmm. Stay safe, my friend, and I hope to see you in Europe soon. Cheers. Um, Thank you. Thanks, buddy. Um, this is Larry Eater with Run Blog Run. This is Socialing the Distance. We just featured Thomas Walsh. And uh, if you like us, like us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. If you love us, subscribe on the YouTube. Tom, thank you. Thank you. Hey, sports fans, it's Larry Eater. This is Socialing the Distance, and we feature tonight Tom Walsh. Tom is one of the finest shot putters in the world. Um, he, uh, you started seeing him win the gold in 2016 in Portland. He had won the under 20 in 14, beating Thomas Majewski. And he also, in 14, he was a silver medal at the Commonwealth Games in Glasgow. In 16, he won the World Indoors, and he took the bronze in Rio uh, in the shot put there, which was uh, uh, where we saw Ryan Krauser uh, show his stuff. Um, in 2017, um, Tom won the London World Championships. And in 2018, he won the Commonwealth Games in the Gold Coast in Australia and also the World Indoor in Birmingham. And in 2019, he was in probably the greatest shot put competition in men's shot put history, um, where he was third to Joe Kovacs and Ryan Krauser. He had the same throw as Ryan. Um, they had to go to countbacks, and he only had two fair throws out of uh, how many was it uh, out of six, and uh, and Ryan had a better uh, uh, third throw. Um, Tom Walsh is one of my favorite athletes. What do I like about Tom? Tom has a great sense of humor. He is a man who's present in the moment, and someone described him is a thrower with a bit of reckless abandon. Uh, when Tom Walsh is on, he's a bit chatty. He uh, is confident, and I've seen him like that. I saw him like that before 2017 when I followed uh, the tour around Europe that summer. And uh, I remember putting in my diary that Walsh looked really good um, in the qualifying in London, he had the biggest throw. I think it was 22-14, um, but he had hurt his abductor, and it was a lot of pain in that throw. In the final, uh, he told us the adrenaline kept him going, and uh, he took the lead in the first throw and just built on it. And uh, he said there was a bit of uh, adult beverages the next several nights, and then he took a three-week break, and then he threw again. Um, he's in New Zealand now, and New Zealand probably has done a better job at managing COVID-19 than any country. They think they've got two cases right now in the country. Um, he just watched a cricket match with 10,000 people, um, but he has been staying in New Zealand, training, uh, doing some competitions, but he wants to get uh, outside and compete against the best. He's going to do that this year. He's confident, uh, Tom is confident that uh, the Olympics are going to happen. He just, you know, none of us know what form it's going to be. Um, he's coached by Andy, or he's managed by Andy Stubbs, and, um, and he gets him around to events, and, and that's how I met Tom. Uh, I think I met him in Birmingham at the Diamond League in, like, 15 or 16, and we had a quick chat. I'll have to look at my interviews. But... Um, he likes to compete. I uh, gave him the, the three-word challenge with um, Thomas Majewski, David Storl, Ryan Krauser, Ryan Whiting, Joe Kovacs. Um, and he did it with a palm. Um, he's a good guy. He loves his event. He's the smallest of throwers. And I asked him a question that I think he kind of liked. I asked him if he relies a lot on his technique because all I could compare him to is John Powell, the American discus thrower, who was the smallest of all the prominent U.S. discus throwers in the 70s and 80s. And when I asked people what put John out there, they said John's technique. 
And John told me that was 20 or 30,000 spins a year. So um, I asked uh, Tom what, uh, what helped him stand out. He said that his form is a little more reckless. And he said when he's on, he's very confident. Um, my final question was, are we going to see one or two people over 23.50 this year? And he said, why not? He thinks you need to have the comp competitors together. And he said they bring the best out of each other. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing some good shot put competitions this coming year. Um, we thanked Tom and we thank Andy Stubbs too. And I thank Mike Deering for producing everything. This is Larry Eater with Run Blog Run. This is Socialing the Distance. We featured Tom Walsh, one of the top shot putters in the world, 2017 world champion, 2018 Commonwealth gold, 2019 bronze world and the world championship as well. Um, and just a good guy uh, and a lot of fun. And he's, one, again, another example of why we cover the sport. There's just some amazing people in it. Great senses of humor, good laugh know that it's a game, um, but beyond all reality, they're running, throwing, and jumping in this pandemic age. So thank you again for watching Social in the Distance. If you like us, uh, check us out at uh, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. If you love us, subscribe on YouTube. Stay safe. If you're indoors, wear a mask. If you're outdoors, wear a mask. If you can't be six feet separated, exercise, hydrate, sleep well. Tell somebody every day that you love them and communicate with your family and friends. Um, but please stay safe. I'm going to see you at some track meets. Take care.